I love how she says that recording in progress and we will go live here. And then when you hear the music, that means everybody in the world going to hear it. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it. We're back. This is CL King coming to you live from the high definition studios here in Impactville. That's right. I am the sheriff of Impactville and we only allow people in this town who are making an impact in other people's lives. So we have a special show tonight because I have tried, we climbed mountains, we traversed through seas, and we could not get this guest on our show because time was so different. In fact, our guest is so cool that she is actually in the future. Y'all gonna love it. You're gonna be blown away when you see my guest and meet my guest tonight. Yeah, and so that's why we said we had to do a Friday episode of Impacting Life 24-7 to get this dear lady on our show. Now, let me tell you, Tracy Cook from Australia is an absolute rock star. She's a friend of Impacting Life 24-7, but she's also someone who has overcome extreme adversity in life. One of the things that it magnetized me to her is that I really couldn't tell in my first look at this lady that she had went through anything. It looks like she's so positive, so uplifting, so dynamic, but yet she had a traumatic life story. She had a segment in life where things were dark and things were closing in and everything was falling apart around her. And you know what she did? She just folded and gave up. No, she didn't. She found the wherewithal within herself to said, you know what? I am not just going to be a victim, even though I have been victimized. She said, Tracy Cook from Australia, she said, even though I have gone through some abuses and even though I have gone through some failures, even though disease has captured my body, I am still not going to give up. And I said, this is why I need this lady in these virtual studios because when you could get somebody like that that says excuses have to go push to the left and excuses get pushed to the right that's the kind of person you want to be aligned with impacting life means that when there is a contact when that item is removed you will still see the effects of that item and tonight ladies and gentlemen i'm bringing somebody into these virtual studios that when you listen to her and you hear her story and her dynamic presentation, you're going to say, you know what? Even when the show is over, I'm going to be different because of her impact. Welcome to Impacting Life 24-7. My guest from Australia, Miss Tracy Cook. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. What an introduction, CL. I am so honored that we could align everything so that I could be on Impacting Life 24-7 because you are a world changer and I love connecting with world changers. And I'm very grateful for the work that you do in this um, area and I'm honored to be here. Well, you know what, Tracy, I'll tell you what, I really, really am delighted that you have taken time out of your schedule because it's morning time there. Thank you, Greg, for putting all of her information already in the chat. Our staff is always on Johnny on the spot. Um, you're already in the morning time on Saturday, correct? I am. It is 8 a.m. in Perth, Western Australia here. So I am coming to you from the future. Coming to you from the future. And, you know, my good friend Vince Warnock in Wellington, New Zealand, we had talked and joked about, well, listen, if, if those that play the lottery, maybe if there's a lottery number, you can let us know about it in the future, then we could play it. Uh, we could play it and then we could hit the lottery in the future when we actually get there. But he said, uh, no, it doesn't really work that way. So I guess we, we can't do time travel, but we're thankful that our times have aligned and connected. First thing that we do on this show, because we don't have any commercials tonight, Tracy. So we got kind of an uninterrupted time for us to just pull out all kind of stuff. Tell us how people can contact you. That's the first thing we do. I want people to hear your website. You'll hear that all throughout the night and how people can get up with you in the various social platforms that you're on. Well, I'm all across media. If you are scrolling through TikTok, if you're scrolling through Instagram, if you are scrolling on Clubhouse, 
Facebook. I am there. I am Tracy Cook. You can't miss me. You can't miss this mug. You're going to see me. But the best way that you can contact me is www tracyleecook.com you will see everything there to be able to connect with me because I like to make an impact and I like to make friends yeah absolutely and and we knew I, I was blessed to be on Tracy's podcast a couple months ago and we knew that that this was going to be a long-term friendship it, it's something we were talking in the pre-show which was a short abbreviated pre-show because I didn't want her to have to get up so early um, but we were talking in the pre-show and time went by so fast that we actually started the show late tonight because we were just having such a time when you can get two talkers together. Oh, my goodness. Right, Tracy? Oh, definitely. We could talk for hours. Definitely. <laughs> so I don't know how I, I have not really figured out. I only do Facebook Live for this show because it keeps me fresh. I, I like to do a live show. I just tagged you. I don't know if that'll work on your end, Tracy, but uh, so maybe people can see it on your page live. I don't, I don't, I'm not really familiar if that actually works or if I need to share it to you, but in, in any case, this will be on all of our platforms. And it's, it's those of you that are listening or those of you that are watching, it's, it's really, it's really a blessing for us on impacting life 24 seven to get somebody of this quality. So Tracy, you know, uh, before we get into like the, the, your life story, just tell us a little bit on the surface about you kind of like where, you know, where you grew up and how, how life was as a kid in Australia. Just give us a little bit of background about Miss Tracy Cook. Cause I know you, but introduce yourself to our audience. Oh, thank you very much for your kind words and the lovely introduction as well, CL. I really appreciate that. So I am a mid-century plus a few years nana. We have got five children. We have got nine grandchildren. We are very busy. Our house is a circus. I grew up in Perth, Western Australia. I spent most of my teenage years as a rebellious teen. And you'll probably hear more about why when I share my story with you. I like adventure. I like action. And I love meeting people and hearing their stories. I can jump in a cab and I can hear somebody's story, even if it's a 10 minute ride. But Thank you very much for asking how I grew up. So I grew up in Perth, Western Australia, in a very traditional family, um, a very, very traditional family. Uh, but uh, my, my father was a hard man and we didn't show our feelings and we didn't talk about how we felt and we had to pull our big girl pants up and, and get on with it. And my, my mother was very traditional and, and subservial. The mum would stay home with the children and the father would go to work. And I have a younger brother and it was a very traditional family. But there was a lot of things going on um, because in, in those days, and it may be generational, but everything stayed in the four walls. That's yeah. how I grew up. Yeah. What happens in this house stays in this house. We don't tell anybody what's going on. Uh, you will be sil silenced. You will sit down and shut up. Um, your voice doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter. You just do as we tell you to do, and we're not going to tell you why. So that's basically how I grew up. Um, and there's a lot more to that story, obviously, which I don't mind sharing. I'm very transparent. And what you see on TV about Outback Australia, you know, like the, the, the Crocodile Dundee kind of Outback, I spent a lot of my time in that kind of situation, uh, traveling around Australia as well. So up in the Territory and up north of Western Australia, where it's just red dirt. And yes, even though I'm in the suburbs of Perth now living, I do have a family of kangaroos that actually lives two doors <laughs> down from me and quite often visits my front yard for treats. I do. But I, yes, there are kangaroos hopping around everywhere. <laughs> I, I've seen those kangaroos on your page, Tracy, and I'm just like, wow. You know, I, I we were just in, we just got back from Texas. And so we were, we, we went to this uh, wildlife refuge and it was about a hundred acres of different types of animals. And they had some kangaroos on there. And I had actually thought of you. I said, man, Tracy has these in her yard all the time. <laughs> like, hello, kangaroos. How y'all doing? 
<laughs> drives my dog crazy. My my dog can't make them out. It's like, do I play with you or do I chase you? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. What's the kin, What's akin to a kangaroo, ladies and gentlemen? Is that is that a cross between a like a mule and a and a I don't know what a. <laughs> <laughs> we got to we got to do our uh, scientific anatomy there. So uh, the the landscape you just kind of pick peak my interest. And again, I'm joined by Tracy Cook. You can find her. Uh, go to her website. It's very very simple. TracyLeeCook.com. You can also find her on Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, TikTok, and uh, LinkedIn, and every other. Po- if there's media, if you put in Tracy Cook, you're gonna find this lady with the. Oh, cool- I'm there. With the coolest, <laughs> the coolest accent. So, so I've I've thought that Australia was like I've just had this picture in my mind because I've never studied the place. Like it was like lush green, you know, kind of uh, marshes and stuff like that. Is that or is the landscape pretty diverse? It is pretty diverse. So I'm in Perth, Western Australia, which is down very much down the almost the bottom of Western Australia, as far away from the US as I could ever be. 36 hour plane ride, by the way, because I've been to the US a few times. But the cities are just like normal everyday cities. Mm -hmm. But it only takes 45 minutes to get out of the cities. And then you've got the greenness and the lushness and things like that. And you go another hour from there. So almost two hours outside of a city and you've got red dirt, you've got gravel roads, you've got little um, outback kind of road houses. And although Australia has caught up with the rest of the world, finally, um, speaking about Western Australia, then we still have a lot of the outback uh, stations, um, almost like in Texas, how you've got the ranches, yeah, well, we've yeah. got stations. Okay. And our stations is where a lot of our Aboriginal communities uh, still live and they still live traditionally. And that's mainly up in the Northern Territory and up the north um, of Western Australia. And that's where I spent a, a lot of my time uh, growing up. And it's still very barren. It's still very um, ochre. We call it ochre, very ozza, ozza. And um, it's got a lot of uh, colloquialisms because us Aussies like to shorten our words and we like to use catchphrases for everything. So it's not going to be ketchup. We call it tomato sauce. But we don't even call it tomato sauce. We call it dead horse because we rhyme things. I don't know. We're weird. (laughs) So when I'm at when I'm at my next barbecue and uh, mm-hmm. I, we got some burgers and hot dogs, I need to ask them to pass the dead horse. Yes, you do. One hundred percent. Yes, Greg, you got <laughs> and that. Of course, right, I'll brother. know what that means. <laughs> Well, Greg and I are getting ready to go to the Carolina Panthers football game next week. So uh, when we get a hot dog from the concession stand, I'll tell them to put some dead horse on that. Greg, you got it, bro. <laughs> 100 percent and i tell you what if they do they're a friend for life, if they, friend know for what, life. if they know what that means you've got a friend for life well i'm going to be i'm going to be your case study uh uh tracy and i'm going to go out there and ask for that and we'll see if somebody if somebody when i ask for it if somebody knows what i'm talking about i'll give them a a a custom impact motivator sweatshirt from my store so we'll do that oh to sweeten the pot yes. huh all right, so, so Tracy, you know, you you talked about how you were raised, and it's interesting because, um, you know, a lot of households, especially um, in that era, you know, that was that was really the reality. You know, what happens in this house stays in this house. But but th- this 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 upbringing, I don't know if that was ne- if that necessarily correlated with some of the adversity that you went through but when did things start going bad for you in life and when did things start becoming difficult and you had had some roadblocks yeah thank you for asking that and it's still very raw no matter how many times I tell my story it still hits a chord every single time so uh, you know you may see me tear up you may see me gasp for breath sometimes when I tell my story because it never gets any easier but I'm very transparent because I know that my story might help somebody overcome theirs and just create that connection of hope and that you can actually overcome and basically CL King thank you very much for asking I have hit every single branch on the tree coming down 
every single branch. If if there is a branch, I'm going to hit it and I'm going to I'm going to hit the floor with a thud. Mm. So when I was growing up, it was a very traditional family, as I mentioned. Dad worked, mum stayed at home. Mum was very subservial, um, although sometimes opinionated. But she would get put back in her place by dad if she spoke out too much. My dad was an alcoholic. He'd lost his license numerous times. He had very bad anger management um, issues and he finds it hard to communicate. Now, this was the reality of the time. We were not the only family in this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Dad would knock off work. He would go to the pub, the local pub, and he would come home drunk, drunk drive, Everyone did it then, still doesn't make it right, right, but everyone was doing that. Now, keep in mind as well, I grew up in a very low socioeconomic area of Perth as well. It was not a wealthy area. It was a poor area, but there were good people there, soul to the earth people that would do anything for anybody. But it was that era. It was that time where everything stayed within your four walls and you presented to the world in a different way than what you were at home. And this confused me. Even growing up at an early age, this confused me. It's because, for example, my brother, who's younger than me, used to play football. So my, there may be an argument the, the night before, but we would still go to football and pretend we're a big, happy family. And this confused me. And I thought, okay, well, maybe everyone is doing this. Maybe everyone's acting like this. And I don't even know how old I was, probably between six and eight years old. Mm -hmm. And I knew then that something wasn't right. I didn't feel like I belonged to that family at that point. Now, during this point as well, and I'm about to share something that, 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 that may trigger some people, mm -hmm. but I think it's really necessary. And I won't go into too much detail, but at that time, my parents used to have friends from the country come up and visit every now and again. And they had two sons, not much older than what I was. And I was sexually abused by one of their sons for years. And I used to dread when they used to come out and tell us that our friends were visiting from the country. And I just remember one night sitting in my room, sitting on my bed and thinking, what kind of world am I living in? Do they not know what's going on? Do they not care what's going on? But my main thought was, is this one of those things that something happens and we just pretend it's not? Because that was the reality they created for me. Right. So I thought maybe everyone's doing this and maybe it's a, it, it's supposed to be allowed to happen to me and then I just pretend it's not mm. because this is the conditioning that I was brought up with. So for, for years I suffered that abuse and I kept it inside of me mm. and I felt silenced for so long. I felt like I couldn't tell the truth. And quite often I thought of telling my mum, but my mum was just so disconnected and she was so hurt a lot of the time right. because of what she was dealing with with my father, coming home drunk, domestic violence. We would witness that. And I remember I was about nine years of age and I thought I have had enough. I've had enough, no more. I'm taking a stand. And this is probably where it all started. And I stood in between my, my mum and my dad and, and they were arguing with each other. Dad was drunk. Mum was having a go at him because he threw his dinner on the table that she had prepared for him for when he comes home drunk. Mm. And I stood in between them and I said, no more, no more, stop it. And with that, my dad got a whip, a jockey whip, and he whipped me black and blue. And I went to school on the bus the next day and I couldn't even sit down. And we never spoke about it. 
We never talked about it. There was no sorries. There was no, I made a bad, bad call. And this used to happen quite often because I started standing up and I would get pushed. I would get my hair pulled. I'd get grounded. I'd get slapped. I'd get beaten. I'd get mainly hit with this jockey whip. And I was consistently from about 10 till about 14 whipped with a jockey whip, black and blue. I, I, I still wear trousers a lot of the time today because I used to have to, to cover my bruises. I wouldn't get changed in the change rooms during sport because in front of people because I, you don't tell people what is happening. And that was the way I actually grew up. That is what I was conditioned to grow up like. You know, and it, it wasn't until I started sleeping over at friends' houses just to get away from my own crazy family because none of this was happening to my brother, only me. Right. Because he didn't speak up. And this is where I'm so passionate today about finding our inner voice and speaking up if we don't feel right speaking right. up for injustices and speaking up for our own self-worth, for our own peace of mind and speaking up for others if they are going through that as well. If they can't find their voice, you have to be their voice for them. And although I still get scared <laughs> and although I still feel the fear and as Louise L. Hay says, feel the fear and do it anyway, Right. That describes most of my days. I feel the fear and I do it anyway because it's not always about me. It's about helping somebody who doesn't have a voice to find their voice and speak up for injustices. Well, so three, in three, a three, nutshell, three. it was child abuse. It was domestic violence and it was finding my voice to stand up. You, you know, Tracy, I'm just, I'm number one, thank you so much for your willingness to be vulnerable and transparent. Again, those of you listening to our podcast, Impacting Life 24-7, I'm joined by my guest from Western Australia, my dear friend, Tracy Cook, and you can connect with her. I would love everybody that watches this online or live to go connect with Tracy at tracyleecook.com. Uh, she, you tell by her accent she's got an, a cool really cool accent a powerful story and i'm i'm envisioning this little girl this nine-year-old girl tracy uh standing between two adults who should you know for better or for worse it, th there should have been a better example there and it almost was like you were trying to be the example you were trying to be the voice to say hey look this isn't right and in, when you spoke up, what, what happened? It began, it, it began to become a punishment for you, even though you were gaining courage to stand up. You want you didn't want to see your mom beat, but in turn, you got beat. I'm 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 very familiar with what you're talking about. And I didn't get whipped with a with a with a whip, but I think I told you on our on our show that when I was on your show that the marks that I got whipped with, the thing that I got whipped with when I was living with my mother. Those marks, I'm 46. Those marks are still on me today. And that was 10 and 11 years old. And so it's like you, 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 you look at those scars that you took and nobody's supposed to say anything. And, and, and you, were, you were dealing with this abuse with these folks coming in from the country. And that went on for how many years? About five to six years. I seem to have blocked a lot of it out. Uh -huh. um, and I came clean to my, not came clean, but I told my parents the truth about two years ago on a phone call. And I said, look, this abuse happened in my childhood. This is who done it. He had since passed away, the, the abuser. And I said, I just, I, I just need to tell you, I just need to tell you, you know, what you do with that information is up to you, but I just need to tell you because I have found my voice now and it took me, you know, 40 odd years to find my voice, but mum and dad, I have found my voice right. and I need to tell you this and what you do with that information, well, that's up to you, but this is what happened to me, hoping that that would explain to them why I was such a wayward teenager and why I kept self um, sabotaging myself for, you know, 30 years. Right. And I finally told them and I had the courage. I found my voice. I was confident. 
And the first words out of my mother's uh, my mother's uh, mouth was, "What a load of sh." Really. <laughs> Um, and I said, excuse me? It, like, it just wasn't the response that I actually thought, you're delusional. What do you mean you grew up in domestic violence? There was nothing like that. And I, and I was literally stuck for words, which doesn't happen very often, and I took a step back and I was like, but it did happen. I didn't make it up. Right. And basically they told me that I was a liar that none of that ever, ever happened and um, that they don't believe me. So I did finally find my voice and I'm so glad that I did. And I haven't spoken to them for over two years now because they need to go and deal with that. Right. They need to process that and do what they need to do with that information because, you know what, I found my voice I confronted that demon from my past right. and I've disconnected now. And you know what? Although they're my parents and it hurts, it's so freeing. Right. It is so freeing because whether they're family or not, if they are not in your in your corner and they, if they do not have your back and if they do not see you for you, then they're not my people. Right. And, you know, I 100% agree with that. Again, uh, this is it's kind of amazing how similar uh, a lot of similarities in the roads that you and I have traveled, Tracy, I didn't I didn't realize they were they were so similar. And I can just imagine, ladies and gentlemen, again, Tracy Cook, she's our guest right here in the virtual studios for this special edition of Impact Life 24 seven. We had to have this uh, special edition because she's in Australia and it's uh, 12 hours into the future there. And so wh when you if you want to connect with Tracy, I would ask that you would do this one thing very simply just go to tracyleecook.com or you can look her up on facebook instagram tiktok and linkedin but I, I i want people to connect with you tracy because it's interesting that we are kind of this week has kind of been this theme my cousin is up in ohio right now she's doing her book signing uh, her book is called Behind Closed Doors, and it's about her story about being molested as a child. And, and so you just said it, which is so powerful. You have your voice now. Your voice was was snuffed out when you were a little kid. It was beat out of you, uh, you know, by by someone who 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 didn't respect you as as the great human that you were. And then now, all these years later, this ha what just happened to you, what you just described happened to me. It was a, it was suggested that what happened in my childhood didn't happen by the very mm. people that was allowing it to happen. Yeah. And you know what? I just put it down to that's on them because they right. haven't worked through their demons. Right. And the ownership falls on us because we've worked through our demons and we've done the work and we've done the personal development and we've, we've, we've got growth and integrity now and we can stand in that power. And if we give in and let the, the abusers or the people saying it didn't happen yeah. get to us and get in our heart and get in our mind and tell us that we're still the problem, Yeah then when we don't give them that power, yeah, it makes me feel more powerful. It that makes me feel more aligned to my, my beliefs and my values. And it makes me know that I'm standing in integrity and that I've grown and that I have belief. Right. And you know what you do with that belief when you grow in that much and you can disconnect from the naysayers and the haters? Mm -hmm. And the ones that don't see you and the ones that don't think you're worthy and the ones that don't believe you, you can go on and help other people with that story. That's right. You can go and use that story to unlock somebody else's story so that they can step into their power as well. And it's all about sharing your power. And those people that are still denying anything like that ever happened in your family, in my family, in many people's families. Right. That didn't happen. That's on them. That's on them. That's on them. That's that's and very judgment very, day will, will come to them. That's very, very powerful. Again, ladies and gentlemen, 
TracyLeeCook.com is where you can find my guest tonight. She is uh, an amazing content creator, uh, storyteller, podcaster, and just all around great human being. Uh, a friend, I consider her a sister now, and uh, we just sisters from different parents, sister, brother, and sister from different parents, that's for sure. Um, but but th there was a few other things that that that, you know, went into these building blocks of of you being this superhero, because I see your cape flying in the background, Tracy. Um, <clears throat> but but you had uh, you had experienced some homelessness and 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 addiction. What was that about? Yeah, so um, yeah, just mentioning the superhero cape, I always say that we have to wear our story like a superhero cape and not an anchor to hold us down. That's true. So um, a great reference there. But yeah, definitely. So um, when as soon as I, I could get out of my home, um, I was I was attracted to all the wrong people for the wrong reasons, the bad boys, uh, the ones that um, didn't treat me so nice. But I was accepted in those kind of circles because everyone in those circles were broken, right? right. So I had relatability and I could be around other broken people that uh, could speak about what happened to them. And I thought, I've been through that too. I've been through that too. But what I didn't realize going into my teens was when you're around so many broken people, you remain broken. You can't heal mm. because that's where they're stuck and that's all they're talking about. And they're victims and they're holding up the victim card and they're going to sit in that victimhood and not actually do anything about it. I didn't Ooh. realize that then. I had all these realizations when I was a little kid. I was a teenager. I should have known better, but I was so broken. I was so beat down. I had no self-worth. I had very, very low self-esteem. I was cocky, but I wasn't confident. I would challenge people. I used to like to fight, fist fight. What? I used to love to have a good fight. I was <laughs> drinking. I was experimenting with drugs. I was with the wrong crowd. And we, um, you know, we got into a lot of trouble. Uh, there was times where I was brought home in a, in a cop van just by, by misbehaving that's how I was getting attention if I go out and cause trouble with my misfit friends then I I'm you know look at me I'm tough right you know that was the mentality during my teens that I had right and it was damaging because there was nobody around me to go that's not the way that's that's not the way you may feel like you belong because all these other people are broken as well, but you don't actually belong. Right. You, you weren't meant to fit in. You were meant to stand out. Right. That's and it wasn't, truth. I didn't learn that lesson until my 20s. But thank you very much because with the, the, the homelessness is uh, in, my, in my late 20s, I kind of got my act together a little bit. I thought enough is enough. I need to get my act together. Um, I'd gone through um, addiction to pain medication. I um, had some uh, some some um, incidents where I was um, a attacked physically, and I got addicted to pain medication. Mm. And um, luckily, I I never ever done hard drugs. Like I'd never done hard drugs, but I did get addicted to pain medication. Mm -hmm. and it made me believe that I was back into my childhood. It made me believe that I was that little girl again. It, it put delusions in my head. Right. So I didn't know reality from non-reality, and I made judgment calls in a psychosis of medication, mm -hmm. and it took me a long time to wean myself off that pain medication to be able to think clearly without that wet blanket of brain fog over my head, clouding my judgment on life changing things. Right. And I finally broke through that barrier late twenties. Finally, finally, I seen the light at the end of the tunnel and I thought it's time to get your act together, Tracy, you were strong once and you've been beat down so much and you've done it mainly to yourself and I and I still had confidence and I still 
had slow self-worth and I really didn't know how to make myself better. Mm. And I thought I'm going to go and get a proper job. So I went back to school because I never finished school. Oh, wow. I went back to school. I went and um, got a got a decent job. I got some money. I got my own place. I bought myself my own first car. I bought some furniture. I had some money in my bank. Things that most people take for granted. I'd never had any of that. I was house hopping all the time. And I was just out drinking and partying all the time and sex, drugs and rock and roll. And it was not good. And you can only do that for so long. And I finally got my act together and I was, I was in a nice place. I was starting to heal. And then I met a guy. You meet a guy, right? You meet a guy. Okay. So let's insert that. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, oh. And um, it was just a couple of months before I had plans with my friend to go to England. I thought, that's it. I'm going to go and be a nanny in England. I'm going to travel the world. I need a new space. I need some new friends. I'm going on an adventure. And we'd been working towards saving this money for this trip to England. Then I met the guy. So the trip to England went out the window. A couple of months later, we moved in together and I found out I was pregnant. Oh, man. Yeah. So I thought, okay. This, this is okay. He's working. We had a nice house. Um, he was nice to me. Uh, we had some money. Um, I'd done my study. I'd got a, a couple of certificates. I was working part-time. And then all of a sudden, I was eight months pregnant. This never gets easier to tell. And... Um, He wasn't the person that I thought he was. He was a narcissist. Mm -hmm. I got beaten with a baseball bat, black and blue, when I was eight months pregnant. Oh, my. I got taken to hospital, and this was my sliding door moment. This was the moment when you can define that one moment that changed freaking everything. This was it. My life had led to this point. And I was laying in the bed and the pastor came to, you know, say, you're losing your baby. I had doctors moving around the room, almost like slow motion. It was as though I was looking down on myself. And I remember taking this deep breath. And while the pastor's there and the doctor's there telling me I'm going to lose my baby, I remember looking at them and this was so so divine it was so divine Mm. and I said no I am not I'd found my voice again back to that nine-year-old child yeah I was that nine-year-old girl going no it's not you don't get to tell me how I'm going to live my life Mm. I will not be losing my baby today and I am here to protect this baby and to make my life better and please God universe creator whoever you are that is supposed to be looking out for me I need you now I need you now right and I'm not going to lose my baby and I didn't lose my baby oh wow (laughs) 28 now 28 oh she ain't no baby no more look at that God is all she is a fighter she is a a fighter she's a a survivor she's a beautiful woman that is an absolutely powerful story that uh, you you found that little girl came back in that hospital room and you said, you know, because listen, you were faced with, you know, the, the doctors and the facts, if you will, that you're going to lose this child. And this is what I try to tell people, man, that 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 faith is powerful. And you you had faith in something that was even bigger than yourself, Tracy. And uh, that that beautiful baby came into this world and now 28 years old. Uh, wow. So I'm, I'm assuming that the relationship with that, with her father did not continue, correct? No. As soon as I was out of that hospital, I went back, I packed my basic belongings, my basic belongings, a couple of her, um, her, her belongings, 
as I was exiting the actual house, I had her in my arms. He was hitting me on the back of the head as I was leaving. He hit her in the face as well. I'm sorry if this is graphic. This is reality. This goes on in more homes than what we realize. Right. And I'm letting people know you are not alone. There's people like, people have been through this. There is hope and you can overcome it. Right. I sought refuge at my mum and dad's. I, that was the only place I had to go. I was homeless. I had a bag of clothes. I had no money. He kept all the money. I had no of my belongings I just worked so hard for. And you know what? I didn't care. Keep my stuff. It's just material. I will rebuild. I just need a place to stay for a couple of months so I can rebuild. During that time, my parents fought endlessly to tell me to go back. And um, I've made my bed. I should lie in it. Ooh, wow. And I couldn't. I couldn't. I finally rented this little cockroach infested, horrible, moldy wall unit because that is all I could afford. But you know what? It was mine. Right. You said this is, I'm going to take it, oh, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm having this. This right. fits my budget. Me and my baby can live our own life on our own terms. Right. And I will be the best mother I can be. And I am going to rebuild. And that was my sliding door moment in that hospital, in that bed with them telling me how I'm going to live my life. No way. No way. I will live my life the way I want to live my life. And here I am in this moldy. I remember the first night just sitting on the couch going, oh, my God, what have I done? There's cockroaches <laughs> on that kitchen bed. <laughs> and, I, and I got a bucket and I got some bleach and I spent the whole weekend just tidying up this little place. I had a mattress on the floor that had been gifted to me by a friend. Um, I had min I didn't even have a fridge. I'd have to walk to the deli every day to get a bag of ice so that I could keep our milk cold. And I'd done that for, I don't know how long I'd done that for. It seemed like months, but it's probably weeks. And then I got a job. Um, because I'd got my certificate and I went and got a job. And then um, my, my daughter was in before, you know, was in daycare and um, I, I was still working. And then she was in before school care and after school care and vacation care. And I was working to rebuild, right? right. I was working to rebuild because I was, I was homeless before this. Yeah, I was sleeping in my parents' spare room and I was kind of, staying at a couple of people's houses but here I am yeah. I did have somewhere to go but I didn't have a home right you know I I had a place to you know sleep every now and again I'd just come out of addiction and childhood sexual abuse and domestic violence from my parents and from the relationship I put myself into and here I am in my own little horrible place that I love so much <laughs> Let me stop you and, right. Let me stop you right there. Ladies and gentlemen, man, I, I did not know because Tracy and I did not plan this out. Um, I did not know that this show was going to be this impactful because, because if you go to Tracy's website, you can go to tracyleecook.com. Tracy doesn't have her website plastered with her story. In fact, Tracy's website is one of the most positive, engaging. It is, it is a information super highway. It has got a whole ton of on ramps for people to improve their life by connecting with someone who has been through hell. And, you know, I was, I was going to spend the next part of our show talking about podcasting because her and I are podcasters and we love, we love talking podcasts, but I really do feel that God has brought Tracy onto this show for, for, for this story. You know, I haven't finished my book yet, Tracy, and it's going to be finished. <laughs> I promise team it will be finished. Um, but you, you don't realize how many similarities that you have illuminated in your story that, that it's like, 
she's talking to you, King, but just not just to me. But how many others, you said it so, so well, how many others that will hear this broadcast later or watch it, the replay later, or are watching it even now, Tracy, that have gone through or are going through these dark, depressive, alone times that, that they seem like they, they, they cannot get out. You are truly, when we say, I know Chris DT Gordon thinks he's a superhero, but you, you truly are a superhero as well because you witnessed this stuff happening. You witnessed abuse as a kid. You were sexually abused as a kid for years. You, you looked to try to find your voice and, you know, you went down some other paths, getting involved with the wrong crowd and, and hanging out and, and getting addicted to painkillers and alcohol and all of those types of things. And, and then you find a guy who does to you exactly what you were that nine year old girl standing between her two parents. You, you found a guy who just repeated the cycle. And it wasn't until you said, you know what? enough is enough. I'm going to have this child, even though you, you could have lost it because he beat you with a baseball bat. I'm going to have this child and I am not going to the hood. Now you went to the hood. You went to, you went to a dump, but you went, you went to a different type of hood. And this ladies and gentlemen is why Tracy cook is so special because she did go to a hood, but she did not go to victimhood. Mm -mm. Y'all hear me? Mm -mm. She did not go to the hood called victimhood. And she said, I will have this baby. I will get out of mom and dad's house and find my own place. I will provide for this child. And you, you know what? I, listen, me, this is why probably me and you get misinterpreted sometimes because people who go through adversity are kind of no nonsense people. We don't mm -hmm. have to, we don't have time for a whole host of reasons why we can just fail. We are those types of people that say, you know what? I don't care if there's nobody else on earth. If that's the direction I'm going, I'm going to go that direction. And so you had your baby and obviously you told me you've had a few more babies and you got remarried and life would tell us how 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 crest us over the hill with with the rest of how things turned around for you Tracy thank you so much so I worked hard I bought my own house and then I'm it was a long time before I could trust again I'd healed, I'd done the work, I'd done the self-development. I was working so hard. I was working two and three jobs. I hardly seen my daughter, but I had a bigger vision in mind. It was quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Some of that I do regret, but I, I was on a mission to break that generational chain of abuse, to be more and to leave a legacy and to teach the power of hard work and determination. And I wanted my daughter to see me as a leader, as a strong, empowered woman who could do things on her own because she needed to or wanted to. And then this man, my husband now, Cookie, they call him. Cookie, what's up, Cookie? <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> he stepped into my life and I resisted. I had my wall up. It took him a long time. He's a very patient man because he seen me. He seen me. Mm -hmm. And he knew the trauma I'd been through. And he still persisted in chasing me. And I gave in. We got happily married. We've got our youngest is 15 years of age. Like I said, we've got nine grandchildren. And uh, three of them are my, 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 my stepson's. Um, as well so we've got five children in total and there's 12 years difference between our youngest daughter and our oldest daughter and he changed everything for me he he seen me he allowed me to be me he allowed me to not make excuses he picked me up when I was down he has stood by my side through thick and thin he is genuine he calls me on my crap. <laughs> he tells me when I'm getting a bit too cocky. 
<laughs> okay. All right, Cookie. <laughs> he, he, um, he um, lets me be me. And isn't that so empowering? I don't have to ask permission. I don't have to um, be held down. I don't have to be told I'm not worthy. Yeah, there's been ups and downs in the relationship. Who doesn't? That makes it fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, it took a while for him to crack through this hard eggshell, I must admit. But now that we overcome and now that we finally get to that place where you're in a relationship and everything is good and you're seen, you're heard, and there is a mutual respect and communication and we're teaching the next generation on how to communicate and that it's okay to cry and it's okay to stand out and have a voice mm. and it's okay sometimes if you don't feel like going to school because you're just so anxious and depressed then I'm going to understand that and I'm going to say you know what baby stay home talk to me what's going on right and to be able to recognize your own childhood patterns and to be able to change the next generation yeah. I see my my granddaughter my eight-year-old granddaughter Layla and she comes to me and she comes into my office here at home and I do a lot of podcasting and coaching and things like that I'm still working full-time as well she comes in and she goes Nana I love you I said I love you too kitten what's going on and she says um I like the way you talk to people <laughs> oh my heart oh yeah. my heart she's been watching that's what we're teaching these generations to come how she's to communicate watching. how to help each other they're little sponges just absorbing all of the goodness where they're going to be a product of the environment we provide for them they pick up on absolutely everything if an eight-year-old can come to me and say i like the way you talk to people and that's all she has to say. No more detail. I know exactly what she means because she hears me encouraging people. Tracy, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Because it's it's uh, 8.55 in the morning in Australia on Saturday, and it's 8.55 in the evening on Friday in Impactville, USA. There is nobody actually that is forcing us to have this conversation right mm. there's there's nobody i mean there's we didn't sign a contract that we were going to get a million dollars to host this show so really there's no financial incentive there's no mandate that's making us do it so you and i could really you could be going about your business on saturday going around doing some yard sailing or chasing some kangaroos i could <laughs> I could be getting ready to go to bed because I'm dead dog tired because I'm always in front of this little eight by 16 screen with a ring light in front of me and a camera in my face. But you know, but I, here's what I want to tell you. And I, we did, we're going to just do another show for podcasting ex exclusively. But for all of those people out there that really want to know the value of what is a content creator, you, you got to see it. You got to see it tonight. Uh, someone who will, someone who has been through adversity, someone who has been through a whole bunch of no's, a whole bunch of walls built up, and could have very easily accepted the status quo or succumbed to her circumstances and maybe not even be in this conversation tonight. But what's with inside this woman, Tracy, Lee Cook. All you content creators out there, this is the essence of what we're trying to do. I look at this sign behind me every time I come into these glorious studios and I say, man, I don't want to have anybody on here that's just trying to find a place to sell their book. Go sell it at Amazon. I don't want to have anybody on here that's just trying to sell their course. Because I, as you guys have heard, I promote the heck out of my guests. But when you can have someone that will unearth the most intimate details of their pain and lay them out before you and say, listen, 
this is what I went through, but I want you to know that's not the end of the story. God wasn't finished with me. If you can tap into that, all you content creators, if you can tap into that, all you difference makers out there, if you can get that as your motive for what you do, then everything else that, that comes along with it, the finances, the growth, the exposure, that will come. But, but Tracy and I, we didn't plan to have a conversation like this. I said, Tracy, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk a little bit about the, the, the bad. We're going to talk about how you overcame. Then we're going to get into your podcasting. And I want to talk about podcasting and blah, 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 blah. We didn't, get a, we didn't even get a chance in, in 58 minutes of trying. We didn't get a chance to get to podcasting because it was tonight's show was supposed to be about you. We brought Tracy Cook here tonight without any pretense and God obviously orchestrated it, that her story would be uninterrupted because I know that there's so many people out there who have gone through what she's going, what she went through. Tracy, I, I really, really, really appreciate you being uh, sensitive to, to where we needed to go tonight. I appreciate you being so candid and so your accent is cool anyway, but I, I really, I appreciate you just being you, you, what you see is what you get with, with Tracy Cook. And, you know, now uh, as we close, we only got a couple minutes, but now in the work that you do, I know you say you work a full-time job, but I don't know how you do it because you work a full-time job in your, in your, in your content, your podcasting and stuff. Now in, in, in this next phase of your life and in that particular phase of your life, that, that, that area that you're, that you're so gifted in your goal of helping other people find their voice and tell their story. Is that kind of like the drum beat behind what Tracy Cook is doing? 100%. That's why I podcast. That's why I allow a platform for people to share their stories, to have a voice. If they haven't been listened to before, they've got a voice on my show. If they want to be seen, if they want to be heard, if they want to make an impact, if they want to be a change maker, and I want them to wear their story like a superhero cape and not an anchor that holds them down. It's creating awareness, it's education. Sometimes it's entertaining, but it's a story just that one person needs to hear to change or save a life to go from victim to victory. Because we can all stay stuck in victimhood, but it's only a few of us that can rise to being victorious. And that's why we need to be the thought leaders, the world changers to lift people up and not give them a push down and allow them to be seen and heard. Wow, that was powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot believe that this broadcast hour went by so fast. We didn't do any commercials. It was totally uninterrupted. And it seems like we were just talking for about 10 minutes because that's, that's when you really tap into the heart of something, when time really... It, it just flies by Tracy Cook. You can find her very simply at TracyLeeCook.com. Tracy, do you got a book? No, but one will be coming out soon. So, so get, thanks for let's, asking. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> let's see if I can hurry up and beat you to get my book done. <laughs> Tracy Lee Cook. You can find her uh, there at TracyLeeCook.com. You can find her on Instagram. TikTok. Tracy, Tracy does more TikToks than I do. I'm late to the TikTok game. Everybody makes fun of me. I've spoken to 400,000 people and I got 120 TikTok fans. <laughs> so my wife's got 5,000 TikTok fans and I'm trying to steal her. I, oh, 6, she says 6,000. I'm trying to steal some of her TikTok fans. Um, but anyway, Tracy, what I do at the close of our show is I give the floor to our guests and I, and I give you an opportunity to leave a word of encouragement based on whatever's on your heart. So, Tracy, I'm going to give you the floor. Take about the next minute or so and leave a word of encouragement to our audience. Go ahead. No matter what you're going through, I want you to step into your story. Feel the fear and do it anyway. And as the great Dolly Parton says, figure out who you are and do it on purpose. Figure out who you are and do it on purpose. That's powerful. I really like that. Great. Type that in there, man, just so I don't forget. Because I like, I'm always liking to steal me a good quote to sound important. <laughs> Tracy Lee Cook from Western Australia, the place with the kangaroos, the lush land, and the red stone streets. We're so thankful that you have taken time out of your schedule. Tracy, let's just go ahead and, and look to 
do another show and we'll just talk all things podcasting. So uh, when maybe after the first holiday here, maybe we can do something in December. And if not, we'll do something in January, but we'll work that out. I want to do another show with you where we can talk all things podcasting because you're a podcasting coach and you make it look easy. Fantastic. That sounds absolutely wonderful. And I'm very gracious to Impacting Life 24-7. And it's great to connect with you again. And I hope your audience got value today. And um, I'm appreciative of all the things you're doing in this space to make an impact in the world as well, CL. Well, thank you, Tracy. Let me ask you this one last question. Did you enjoy yourself? I did definitely enjoy myself. And thank you for allowing a space for people to tell their stories as well. It's always an honor to speak with you, CL. Who would not be honored by having a talk with you? Uh, all right. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, look, go enjoy the rest of your day. I, and uh, I will call it a night here at, at Impact Life 24 7. God bless you, Tracy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Tracy leecook.com you can connect with her on her website and uh wow what an absolute brave soul i mean eight months nine months pregnant getting beat with a baseball bat by her husband wow and you know greg this is why we do this brother okay i, I don't i don't discount any moment yeah, find out who you are and do it on purpose. I don't discount any moment that someone who is who is being kind enough to share their story with our audience. I don't discount any moment that that could be the story that saves that person from getting arrested and they wind up in your police department, Gray. Or oh, that, sa that saves that young mother from contemplating suicide. It stops that young young teenager from going out and get jumped into a gang by listening to and pulling out the heart of these these uh these guests that we have man there, there's got to be if we haven't when i get to heaven i'm gonna just like lord i know a lot of people downloaded this show but did it impact at least one person i really do feel like it did all right tracy lee cook that's it for us tonight on this special Friday night edition of Impact Life 24 7. I'm going to let Greg go so he can go get some sleep because <laughs> you know it's way past his bedtime on a Friday night. And then uh, we will be back at around 11 50 tonight for four dynamic guests uh, on our Midnight Motivation. And that is a platform that we created exclusively for spreading positivity. And we're done with so much negativity. We are controlling the narrative. We'll have Bettina Carey, who is a world-class uh, Latina, who has built an amazing business out there in, in the West. Tequila Kusar, Chris DT Gordon, who is a superhero. <laughs> Wait till you hear his story. He talks about the attitude of gratitude. And of course, my great, great, great longtime friend, Dante Holt. He's going to close it out for us. All right. We'll see you guys at Midnight Motivation. Thank you so much.